wait, wait, wait. Don't leave without me. Ah, I'm so glad I made it, boys and girls. My name is Manny, and I am so excited to be here with you today for our series called Time Travel, where we go back in time to the Bible to find someone that the Holy Spirit helped. And we also see how the Holy Spirit can help us too. So I brought my suitcase and I am ready to travel back in time. But first, I wanna mention, I think there's some new people out there. Hey, new people, we're so excited that you're here with us. We have some special news for you. Every single week, we send out mail to all of our friends. It's so fun. I think you're really gonna love it. So if you wanna be on that list, all you gotta do is text in your name and the word new to the number on the screen and we'll start sending you our mailers. One of the first things that we do here at Kids Crossing is we pray. So if everybody can get nice and quiet for me so we can pray. God, I thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you've given to us. And I thank you for each and every boy and girl watching this right now. I ask that you be with us as we go through our week and as we learn about you today. Open our hearts and minds. And in your name we pray, Jesus, amen. Okay, boys and girls, so our first song is called, He is the Light. And I have a question for you because there's a part in this song that says, follow his lead and light up the world. Now, do you think when they say that, they mean to take a flashlight and shine it all over for everybody to see? Well, maybe if it's dark and they need one, but what I really think they're talking about in the song is about following Jesus' lead and shining his light of love for everyone to see. We'll be back to talk a little bit more about that after the song. back. Okay, today we are going to travel back in time to find a man, a Roman army officer named Cornelius. Our time machine is ready. Let's go, boys and girls. Where, where am I? What is 
this place? Hi there, my name's Cornelius. What's your name? Oh, hi, Cammie. Have you seen Peter? I was with Peter and he was telling me and my family a message from God when all of a sudden Manny came in and brought me here. I think this might be a dream. You see, I was praying to God and I had a vision, almost like a dream, of an angel coming to tell me to find someone named Peter. And a few days later, I found Peter and he had a message for me from God. You know, I really want to tell you the rest of my story, but oh, I'm really tired from all that time travel. So I'll see you later. There was a man named Cornelius who lived in Caesarea. He was a thoroughly good man. He led everyone in his house to live worshipfully before God and was always helping people in need and had the habit of prayer. Cornelius clearly heard from God that he was to visit Peter to hear what he had to say. So Cornelius was en route to Peter's house. Peter was another of the great disciples who was busy proclaiming what Jesus had come and fulfilled the prophecy of a savior. But Peter was still only preaching this to the Jewish people who didn't know yet or understand this. But the salvation for the Jews was only part of the great plan. God had much bigger plans for why Jesus came. It meant salvation for everyone. While Cornelius was coming to visit Peter, God was talking with Peter. It was about noon. Peter got hungry and started thinking about lunch. While lunch was being prepared, he had a vision on his deck. It was as real as Peter had ever experienced. He saw the skies open up and something that looked like a huge blanket lowered by ropes at its four corners settled in the ground. And every kind of animal and reptile and bird you could think of was on it. And then a voice came, go to it, Peter, eat and enjoy. And Peter said, oh no, Lord, I've never so much as tasted food that wasn't kosher. The voice came a second time. If God says it's okay, it's okay. And this happened three times. And then the blanket was pulled up into the skies. Just after this, Peter heard a knock at his door. It was Cornelius who was doing what God asked him to do, invite Peter to come and preach. Well, Jewish custom and law had not allowed for much interaction with Gentiles, of which Cornelius was certainly one. In fact, it didn't allow for any Gentile interaction at all. They were unclean, not dirty, just had eaten or drank something that was contrary to God's law in the Old Testament. But this was the start of the New Testament. Jesus coming had fulfilled the law. It was a new day. Salvation was for everyone. But Peter hadn't got the memo yet, or he hadn't understood it yet. And Peter's head was still spinning, but what he had just happened in the vision, he had just seen. But prompted by the Spirit, he left with Cornelius and went to his town. Then when Peter arrived, he was welcomed with open arms. And Peter found that the people were desperate to hear and understand the good news of Jesus coming. Peter exploded with excitement when he heard this, and then his vision made sense. God was getting Peter ready to help take the gospel to the Gentiles as well. It's God's own truth, Peter said. Nothing could be plainer. God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do as he says, the door is open. The message he sent to the children of Israel that through Jesus Christ, everything is being put together again. Well, he's doing it everywhere among everyone. Well, there was much celebration that day in Caesarea. Salvation had come both for the Jew and the Gentile. Whew. That was awesome, boys and girls. So I want to talk all about our video. But first, Cornelius left us this awesome scroll. And I hear today's takeaway on it is on it. So let's check it out. It says the Holy Spirit helps us to love everyone. So let's talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So our video had two people in it. Well, it had more than two people, but there were two people I want to talk about, Cornelius and Peter. So they were two very different people from very different places, very different families and very different cultures. And it even says in the Bible, that Peter said that it was against the law for them to be together. But you know what the Bible also says? The Bible says that God doesn't have favorites. He doesn't love one person more than the other. Because of Jesus and what he did on the cross, we all have the opportunity to have our sins forgiven. God loves all of us and he wants all of us to love everyone like he does. But can I just be honest? That's not always easy, is it? Especially for me, when someone's hurt me, or when my feelings have been hurt, 
or when I don't feel like I was treated fairly or right, it's not easy. But the good news is that we have help. We don't have to do this alone, boys and girls. God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to help us to love everyone, right? Can you say it with me? The Holy Spirit helps us to love everyone. Now I wanna come back and talk a little bit more about the Holy Spirit, but I hear we have someone new to talk about our verse with us this week. Let's check it out. Hey guys, my name is Mr. Danny, and I just wanna go over your guys' memory verse this week. Now, most of you are probably familiar with this book right here. Sometimes they look a little bit different, but this is the Bible. Now, back in the day, they didn't have the Bible. They had these things called scrolls, and it was tough. They had to scroll it out and find uh, okay, that's where it is. It's right there. And then they would read from it and then they had to roll it back up. But today we've got something really cool I want to share with. Most of you guys have seen one of these. Check this out. I went to the app store, typed in Bible, gave me this sweet app. Watch this. Look, Romans and our memory verses, chapter eight, verse 14. And it says, for those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. And that's Romans 8.14. So if you don't have one of these handy or one of these handy, jump on your iPad, jump on your phone, download that app, and you can find any verse you want. Have a good week, guys. Okay, so we've been talking about God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And I know you're probably thinking, well, Manny, which one is it? Well, I want to show you and tell you that it's all three of them in one. So I have a question. Does anyone know what H2O is? Josie, yes, it's water. H2O is actually water, ice, or steam. So I'll show you. So H2O, we have some water here. And water, most of you know, can also be ice, right? And H2O can also be steam. You can see there's some steam coming up there. All of those are H2O. Just like God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are all God, except for they're special. Unlike water, steam, and ice, H2O can't be all those at once. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are all God at the exact same time, boys and girls. It's so amazing and so special because when we pray, we are praying to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We're not just praying to one. We're praying to all of them together in one, boys and girls. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way God's love changed me more than I can say Can't keep it